We continue here tonight with this concerning story. Parents sometimes murder their children to take revenge. It's according to a study recently published by Dr. Melanie Moon from Stellenbosch University and Professor Christian Bezadenhout from the University of Pretoria. Dr. Moon joins us to unpack the latest on the study. It can be a very difficult subject to try and understand why it is that a parent would take the life of their own child. What did you look at specifically when embarking on the study? Um, yes, when we started this study, we really wanted to look at the reasons behind parents committing these crimes. Um, because I think family murder is a very um, personal type of murder and it touches more than just the people that are affected by these crimes, you know, the extended families as well as the communities. So um, it started off with us uh, looking at uh, murder by children, family murder by children, and then people started saying, but we're seeing these cases more and more in the media. What are the reasons for these crimes? Mm. Uh, why are they committed? And what did you find? What was the reason? What is the reason? So just um, to, to summarize, we didn't look at all the types of um, filicides. We call it filicide when a parent murder their child. We only looked at revenge filicide specifically. And we looked at about 20 cases that we found from 2003 until 2021. Unfortunately, we couldn't find more cases earlier on. But what we saw with the revenge filicides, in other words, the one partner is extremely anger, angry at the other partner. And they take out their anger and their almost narcissistic rage on the child. So the child becomes almost like a scapegoat for the parent. So the parent would almost dehumanize this child because it doesn't really make a lot of sense for a parent to murder their own flesh and blood. But the child becomes almost um, dehuman mm. and the parent sort of just wants to get this anger out, murder this child so that the other one suffers, in other words. So the, the suffering of the other partner is extremely important to them. Um, yeah, mm. so that was one of the reasons that we found. And Dr. Moon, often when we hear stories of uh, parents who, who have taken the lives of their own children, the issue of mental well-being comes up and there are all sorts of psychological reasons that are posited for why that may be the case. What did that study, what did your study find uh, in relation to that? Yes, I think at that moment when we look at revenge filicide specifically, um, I think, I believe that person is not necessarily a hundred percent thinking of of the future or always being logical about it. They're thinking of the year and now. I'm feeling hurt. It's often cases where the other one rejected them for someone else or there's jealousy or there was an argument or conflict just before the murders took place. So um, we can see that they are, um, you know, they're not 100% who they are normally. So a lot of people would also say, but we didn't expect that from from these people. But just to look at filicide, there are different reasons for parents to um, murder their children. One of the psychological problems is that we do see sometimes that some of the parents have, um, for instance, there's a psychosis, so they're not 100% um, you know, aware of what they do when they commit these crimes or severe depression. So psychologically, we see that as well. Um, but in these crimes where we said it's retaliation it's almost a retaliation mm. we see that it's more about the hurt it's almost a narcissistic rage that they experience because they were rejected by the other partner so they sort of i'm hurting so therefore i want to see that you are also hurting um and they feel that we'll get an equilibrium in that way but obviously it's it's not a logical way so some of these crimes you know one case, for instance, the parent murdered the, the young son and he was, they couldn't find the body. And he kept on saying, but you have to suffer. I want to see how you suffer. Sure. He was actually already convicted and he was in jail. And then they discovered the body and he kept on saying, I can't tell you where this child. So it was almost, you know, he wanted to see that pain. He wanted to see that 
um, heard in the other partner. So it's completely um, different in these types of crimes. But we often see psychological problems that do go hand in hand with this. Would you, would you say it tells us anything specific about the quality then of relationships that are taking place um, between individuals and how to resolve some of the conflicts and tensions that happen post uh, those relationships? Yes, it does say a lot about these crimes. I have to say that um, 70 to 80 percent of murders in South Africa are committed by someone in your community and about 25 percent of these crimes are committed by someone that actually lives with you. So that says a lot about um, what we think, um, you know, we always think it's someone out there that we have to be worried about, but often we see that our problems and our relationships are within the homes. And uh, another thing that I really also want to emphasize and say is that often neighbors and uh, schools and people know about conflict and problems in the home, but they sort of don't want to get involved, you know. So um, I do feel strongly about um, the home and relationships that we see in the homes. You know, mm-hmm. we often teach our children, they sort of call it the code of the streets. So parents teach their children things that they can use out there in case they get into trouble. But the, the violence and the anger and the crimes come into the house. And we sort of teach our children how do we resolve problems. We resolve problems through being aggressive. Uh, through being violent. We don't teach them compassion and empathy and those types of things. So we're very much into a drive now at the University of Stellenbosch as well is to to sort of get compassionate care into our school systems as well, you know, because I I believe that's part of our problems with relationships is that we don't show empathy, we don't show Uh a lot of compassion for our fellow human beings. Dr. Melanie Moon, let me thank you so much for joining us tonight and for unpacking uh, the findings of this research. It is really insightful. Stephen.